tearing me apart. How much can it take this tiny little heart? Don't let anybody tear this world apart. Join in my crusade and fight beside this tiny little heart. Don't you take for granted everything you've got. Listen to the beating of my little heart. Tiny little heart, tiny little heart. Join in my crusade with my tiny little heart. Change of heart. When I was appointed Royal Environmental Knight by the King of the Gnomes, I had no idea what an enormous and difficult task defending our beloved planet Earth would be. Though before too long, even I could see that it was the kind of job it would be impossible for me to accomplish alone, even with the help of every living gnome. I realized it was something that could only be accomplished with the help and cooperation of humans. I remember one night Lisa and I were sleeping soundly in our bed when suddenly I heard a cry for help. Huh? So I decided to get up and investigate. Excuse me, Twinkle. I'm sorry to wake you. I wonder if you would mind lighting the way to the door. Ah, yes, that's much better. Thank you. Yes, I'm David the Gnome. What can I do for you? Oh, I see. Whoops. Ah, thank you. Oh, my goodness. What terrible news. Well, I'll do everything I can to help. David, what's the matter, and who's that? Uh, Lisa, this is Hooter. He's an eagle owl. It's very nice to meet you, Hooter. He's come to me with a problem. His mate Hortense has been crying day and night for over a week now, and she refuses to eat. Oh, good uh. heavens, why not? They both want to have owlets, but Hortense's eggs keep breaking. Oh, dear, well, that will never do. Hey, what's all the commotion? And who's this, uh, huh? This is Hooter, Tumpty, and he needs our help, so you must hurry and get dressed. We'll be ready in just a minute. <laughs> Don't you think that the forest looks sad, Uncle David? Yes, you're right, Tumpty. The trees that aren't already dead are dying. Maybe it's this air. It sure makes my eyes burn. Forests make oxygen so we can breathe. They certainly don't make pollution. There is something very wrong here. Yes. <laughs> I am David, and this is my nephew, Tomty. Your eggs broke again, then? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you, really. Oh, please don't cry. Just you wait. My Uncle David and I are here to help you. Now then. Hmm. The shell's too thin. That's why your eggs always break. And I have a feeling that it may be something to do with that cloud of pollution that's been drifting over the forest. But that pollution's up in the sky, Uncle. How can that dirt get all the way down here? The rain! It's the rain, isn't it? 
That's right, Tumpty. Polluted air makes for polluted rain. Ouch! Hey! It burnt my hand and made a hole in my shirt! We have to follow this cloud and trace its origins. Try and find out what's causing all this pollution. Hooter? <laughs> There you go, Stinky. Didn't I tell you Drew would find paradise for you? Don't forget the part I played in it, Drew. I smelled the way here, remember? I guess I just got a nose for yuck. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Hey, Betty! Your stinky sonar helped, too. Ah, uh, the good old smell of home, filthy home, eh, Stinky? <laughs> yeah. uh... I love pollution. He Surf's up, Charlie! No! Uh, hey, watch what you're doing, you slurfing simpleton! Dude, I'm sorry about that, boss. Hey, how about a relax your cigar? Oh, that's my nose! Uh, oh. <laughs> Didn't I tell you guys this was a troll's paradise? They even put on a firework display for us! Oh, boy, toxic waste, my favorite! Uh, yummy, scummy, it's in my tummy! I like this place, Drew. Let's camp here! Why settle for the toxic waste coming out of that little pipe when we can make straight for the very place that makes it? <laughs> Look, Uncle David, down there, a lot of the pollution in the air seems to be coming from that factory. You're right. In which case, it will be the perfect place to start our campaign to clean up the air. Down there, Hooter, next to the gate, if you please. Hmm. hmm. This factory makes cars. And far, far too much pollution. What do you think we should do, Uncle? We need to find the person responsible for this pollution and persuade them to clean up their act. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> mm. How's about that, then? Who? 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 Now, don't get in a flat, little buddy. Drew's the name of Troubles My Game, and I just clipped your wings. <laughs> ah, whoa, what the hell? Whoa! I, I got him! Let me see! We've got to hide. Hup. Quick, Tomty, climb up it. Hup. Hup. Hey, where did they go to? Huh? Hmm. There they are! <laughs> I think I'll shake them up a little! That's right, Nomi's come to old Stinky! Free you! Mm. Huh? You let him escape, idiot! Never mind all that, trollies. Follow me! Come on! Hmm. This place has got everything we need to make a home! Mmm! What do they call this thing? It's a statue. A statue of what? It's called the Thinker, and he's figuring out a way to catch animals and cook them. Oh, I don't think he's thinking that at all. He's thinking how nice all this polluted air is. That's why he's called the Thinker. Nah. You guys have got it all wrong. He's thinking oh, if he burned this place to the ground, he could cause some worldwide pollution. <clears throat> Lend me a hand. You scratch my back, I'll rip your arm no! off! <laughs> he landed on my foot! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Come on, trolleys, I'm sure there's a lot more trouble and destruction we can cause. Yeah, and I could sure use some more of that industrial effluence. Chickens today, I brought you some breadcrumbs. There's some for Oscar, some for Emmy, some for Leroy, and you're not eating. Oh no, what's wrong with my beautiful fishy friends? The world will soon have a population of seven billion. Did you hear that? Seven billion people. And I want each and every one of them to drive a bunch mobile. <laughs> This looks as good a place as any to start. Okay, Hooter, let's go in. Mr. Jitters, will you get rid of that filthy feathered freak and close the window? 
Right away, Mr. Bunch, sir. You better go, Hooter, and thanks for the ride. Yes, thank you, Hooter. We've got some work to do here, but we'll meet you back at your nest as soon as we've figured out how to help Hortense, okay? Shoo! Get away! Get out of here, huh? Oh, come on! That was close! Huh? We can listen to them from up there. Grab hold! As for you, Miss Foreman, you're gonna have to step up production if you want to keep your job. Do you understand? Yes, sure. I know that, sir, but... No buts! Just do it! Do I make myself clear? Ugh! Mr. Bunch is a mean man, Uncle David. Yes, but he wasn't always that way, Tumpty. He looks such a nice boy in this photograph here. And a caring father. Any more questions? Huh? Uh... What is it, Jitters? Well, sir, I... I was just thinking about the environment and the harm this might cause. And what do you mean by that? Our factory's already polluting the rivers and the oceans, and the smoke, it pollutes the air. Oh, wise up, Jitters. Ooh. Pollution is a fact of life, and we can't let it get in our way. People need transport, we give it to them. That's why we make bunchmobiles. Environment, schmirement, ha! I thought, well, instead of building our cars by burning oil and coal, which causes air pollution, acid rain, and the like, we could use natural energy, such as solar power, wind, and water. Nature's own power. While there are humans like Mr. Jitters around, there is still some hope left for the world, you know? We could go even further and have the Bunchmobile powered by electricity instead of gasoline. We could make it more affordable and more energy efficient, which would make for a smaller car rather than a big one, which makes much more sense. You idiot jitters! If we make your small ecological car, then we make small profits! We make bunchmobiles here, and that's a big car, so we get big profits! Power's number one, and don't forget it! Daddy, Daddy, help me! My fish are all sick, they won't eat! You've gotta do something! Okay, okay, calm down, Holly. You're probably just giving them too much food. My little daughter here just loves fish. Why, back when I was her age, I loved fishing. No, Daddy, it's more than that. It is. They are really sick. You've got to do something to help them. Well, I'm in a very important meeting just now, Holly, and I don't have time to oh. talk about fish. You don't have time for anything anymore except your factory. All right. Quit standing around. Let's go. I want more cars, and I don't care how you make them. Yes, sir. We'll do our best, Mr. Bunch, sir. There's only one way that Mr. Bunch is going to realize just how much damage he's doing, Tumpty, if we show him. How will we do that, Uncle David? You know we can't talk to him. Well, perhaps reminding him of happier childhood memories will cause Mr. Bunch to have a change of heart towards the environment and his daughter. It's worth a try. <laughs> Give me a hand. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> I and it's it. working, Uncle David. He's smiling, see? Hey, that reminds me. I'm going to be leaving the factory for a few days, Miss Foreman. I'm taking my family up to the lake where my father used to take me fishing, so I'm leaving you in charge. I remember when I was a kid, you could drive all the way from the factory up to the lake and not come across more than a dozen cars the whole journey. <coughs> hey, Holly, are you all right there? It's hard to breathe. You just wait till we get to the family cabin up there in the pine forest. You'll have plenty of fresh air there to breathe and beautiful blue skies. The way Mr. Bunch is remembering his family cabin in the forest, I'd say the remembering powder is working well, Uncle David. It certainly seems so. What are we going to do now that we've finally arrived here? First of all, we have to show Mr. Bunch the past. Then we'll show him how the future will be if humans don't stop polluting the Earth. I want to go on the swing! I'll make a nice lunch and bring it down to you. Bye! Listen, Daddy, I can't hear any birds! You're right! I can't hear any crickets or frogs either. Not even a fly buzzing around. That's strange. Hey, look! 
There isn't even a single dragonfly out on the lake. Where did they all go to, Daddy? Probably just taking a nap. <coughs> the sky's not blue and it's hard to breathe. Just a cloud. I think I'll try some fishing. Let's go, Tumpty. Now, a little dream powder. Hey! What the...? Ugh. We have to go inside his dream. Come on. Hey, Mr. Bunch! Uh, uh. Down here! We've got a big problem, Mr. Bunch, and there ain't much time to solve it. Who are you? I don't have any problems. You are the problem. You'll see how big your problem is clearly from a gnome's point of view. Yay! What's going on? Ooh. We want to show you something. First, we want to show you what life was like on Earth a long time ago. Wow! Yeah. Can you really do all that, Uncle David? Oh, you can do anything in a dream. The cabin! The dock! Where are they? Where did everything go? This is how it looked when humans still lived in caves. Don't worry, Mr. Bunch. Felicity Fox is just going to show us around. You see? There used to be martens living here and herds of deer with their fawns. There were a lot of squirrels in the trees. And Kodiak bears roamed the forest. The place teemed with wildlife. They're beautiful. I agree, but sadly, most of these animals are already extinct. Yeah, creatures like this were endangered by people like you. What did I do? <laughs> ah! Stop it! Stop it! Do something! <laughs> As you see, the only smoke in the air in those days was the occasional volcano or lightning fire. And then as soon as man learned how to make fire, littering and pollution began in earnest. And this pollution brought trolls out from the poisoned underworld to live above ground alongside man. Whoa! <laughs> These salmon would spend most of their time in the ocean and then swim up river every year to lay and fertilize new eggs. They could jump over 10 foot at a time and travel more than 70 miles in a day. Now that's a magnificent fish! Whoa! You see, a lot of things have changed since then and Hooter's gonna show us how. Whoa! See, Mr. Punch, the salmon can't get past this dam to travel up river and as the rivers there are polluted, their eggs probably wouldn't hatch anyway. Yeah, so pollution's wiping them out. The same pollution that's coming out of your factory. I'm sorry about the salmon, but those dams power cities and factories like mine, and we need all that power. That's my factory down there. <laughs> nice work, Fruit. Now that's what I call a hot rod. <laughs> Flying colored cars! How tasteful! <laughs> it would seem that the trolls have modified your production line, Mr. Bunch. Take me away from all of this! This is horrible! Yes, soon. But first, there's one more thing for you to see. Who's that dirty little street urchin, huh? Go take a closer look at her. She can't see you. Don't worry. No, Holly! No, it can't be! It's my own sweet daughter! Holly, it's me! Sorry, she can't hear you either. All of this here, it could really happen, couldn't it? Ooh, yes, it's happening right now. As you can see, acid rain hurts not only animals and trees, but humans as well. And it's all my fault? That's right, and it'll get worse unless you do something about it. We must hurry. Take me back. Take me away. Very well. Back to the lake, Hooter. <sighs> huh? That's right, Mr. Bunch. Everything's been destroyed. It's your worst nightmare, and it's going to get a lot worse if you don't do something to stop the pollution that causes acid rain. Because if you don't, before long, nothing will be able to live on this planet, except the trolls, maybe. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Have some toxic slime, little guy. Maybe you want to get a whiff of stinky finest. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe an acid rain shower. Oh, that hurts. I'll change. Stop it. Change? Change what, Thomas? Oh. Daddy, what is it? What's wrong? 
My little girl. The forest is still here, and that means there's still time. Your lunch is ready, Thomas. There's no time for lunch. I gotta get back to the factory and take some measures to stop all this pollution. But how? Are you gonna shut it down? Until we can improve it and stop it polluting our planet, yes. There's owls and trees and frogs to save, not to mention fish and a whole wonderful wide world. And we can do something to help save it. All of us, all three of us, if you really want to, that is. You mean it, Daddy? Are we really gonna do that? Yes, Holly, I really mean it. And you and me have got a fountain to clean up and some important fish to make well and care for, haven't we? Oh, darling, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful sight that is, and it gives me real hope for our beloved planet. If a man like Mr. Bunch can have a change of heart, that means anyone can have one. All right? Yes, but you made it happen, Uncle David. We all made it happen. I'd better report into Milius at the Trondheim Council. I have already been watching you. You've done a marvelous job. It's a while since Mr. Bunch has changed. I want to check on his progress. And then we must go and check on Hooter, Hortense and their eggs and see if things have improved, David. Lisa, look at that. It's wonderful. The factory's using wind and solar energy to build cars instead of burning coal and oil, which caused the air pollution and acid rain. Well done, Jitters. Good work. Even Holly's fish friends seem to be healthy again. <laughs> and the beach is now much safer for swimming. Now we gotta find it's another polluted paradise somewhere. Yeah, you're right. This place sure doesn't stink anymore. Hey, don't worry, Stinky. The world's full of pollution. More than half the protected forests in Europe are endangered by acid rain, along with forests in other parts of the globe. But when humans decide to help and heal rather than hurt and harm, there is hope for our planet yet. In our next adventure, we travel to the Amazon rainforests. Woodcutters are causing devastation to a unique environment where some of the rarest wildlife on Earth lives. The local tribespeople also depend on the trees, however, which provide the only hope of a cure for a small boy's sickness. To Lisa's dismay, our stowaway grandchildren, Anna and Harry, come along for the ride. But it's a ride into danger and confrontation. The antidotes for many illnesses may lay hidden in the rainforests, and it's up to we gnomes to put a stop to this devastation. Take good care of the trees in the forest. Take good care of the birds in the sky Take good care of the fish in the ocean For you'll never, you'll never know why You're gonna need them someday You're gonna need them someday It's a time for belief For making things right So go on your way And pray every day Cause everything's gonna be alright